Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to go through this reddit post that asks the question Is C-Shop underhyped? Now this post got a lot of traction, 420 likes for the .NET subreddit It's actually quite a lot and people from other languages have chipped in the conversation that's happening in this post So in this video I'm going to go through the post, through the comments and give you my take on the subject As well as someone who's specializing in .NET for the past 8 years As always, please treat these videos as discussion opportunities And if you want, leave comments down below asking or answering questions that other people already have about this subject Because if you are a C-Shop developer and that's all you ever were, you don't know the standpoint of other frameworks or languages, so it's good to get exposure to those things to have a healthy discussion. If you like that type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so let's see what we have here. The question the author asked is, is C Shop underhyped? I have my own opinions, and I'm going to express those as we go. But for now, let's see what they said. I watch a lot of tech YouTube channels, which by the way, this one is, and they seem to be using languages that are trendy right now, like Go, Rust, JavaScript, and Node.js. I would also add here TypeScript as well. It's very popular and also all the front-end frameworks like React, Vue and so on. That's the things that I see are very popular as well as Python by the way because of their accessibility in my opinion. Now they continue on one hand I know that C Sharp is one of the most widely used languages which it is by the way and it's not just widely used because it's legacy. As a matter of fact next year it's going to overtake Java in popularity if it keeps growing in the rate it's growing. So it's not that legacy apps were built and they're slowly dying but very very slowly more and more people are adopting c-shop and it's on track to become the fourth most popular language or actually let me just change that a bit not necessarily the most popular but the most used i think popularity and usage are a bit different but then even though the language is used quite a bit there is not so much hype around it now i want to point out that when i started c-shop tutorials there wasn't really anything around for C-sharp, there was like four channels and now we have way more and more creeping up and I think that's because of the popularity of the language but also the ability to monetize in a way channels like this and make a career out of it and that would only be possible if C-sharp was popular enough so I don't necessarily think it is underhyped but it certainly has a bit of a bad stigma that we need to get over and I'm sure the comments later will address that as well. Now a very nice thing is that they point out that C Sharp looks more powerful than these other languages and frameworks and there's a question mark around Rust because Rust is actually very very fast but C Sharp does hit the sweet spot of productivity and performance which I would agree on. So the question is if you can do all of these things with C Sharp possibly quicker than other languages and have great performance why it is not so overhyped or at least as hyped as it should be given what it can do. So I have my own thoughts, let's see what the comments say. Now before I move on I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called From Zero to Hero Refactoring for C-Shop Developers. In that course Nico Centino, a principal software engineering manager in Microsoft is going to teach you everything you need to know from the very basics on some pretty advanced stuff on how to refactor your C-Shop code. You're going to understand not only the how but also the why we make the decisions we make and at the end of this course you will know how to refactor and write better C-Shop Shop code. Nick has been working at Microsoft for the past three years and he has really seen some good and some bad things so he really knows what he's talking about and he poured his heart into this course. Now to celebrate the launch of this course I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount code so use the link in the description and use discount code REFAC20 at checkout to claim it. These do tend to go very quickly so use it sooner rather than later. Now back to the video. All right so let's take a look at the comments. The first one and the most avoided one is I think there's still a lot of stigma against it especially with its only Windows Pass and some of the Microsoft Actions stuff. Now, I want to point out that TypeScript is a very popular language by Microsoft made by the original creator of C Sharp. So I think the Microsoft Actions aspect doesn't really affect it, or at least not the general Microsoft Actions. If you're referring to Microsoft Actions regarding C Sharp, then yes, I agree. But just because Microsoft has done questionable things in the past, I don't think this will necessarily affect how new Microsoft stuff are perceived, especially with all the positive actions they're doing now, both with C Sharp and .NET, which we didn't have drama in a long time, but also OpenAI and all that. Keep in mind, the most popular text editor that everyone is using as an ID is VS Code. So I guess there is stigma, but I think it's stigma specific to C Sharp. And there's also stigma specifically from what I see to the .NET developer. There's memes flying around over and over again about what type of developer 
is a C sharp developer. Now, I do believe that all habits do die hard, but I don't think we can just put all of the negativity on Microsoft themselves, because especially the .NET team has done so many good things for the language, and they keep focusing on the aspects of the language, namely performance and features, that are the things that really, really matter. Yes, Azure is sort of an always present thing that with anything they do, there will be some Azure focused things, but it doesn't overpower the language, which is very, very good. For example, with Aspire, yes, Aspire launched and Aspire happens to have an easy way to deploy in Azure, but that wasn't really in the forefront. The accessibility and how cool the project was, was what was the focal point of the presentation, which I think is very good. And next very upvoted comment is C Sharp is like Excel. It's not super sexy, but knowing how to use it well will mean you'll find the job. I, I mean, I think C Sharp is a very sexy language. We get features at a rate that not many other languages get, and they're actually useful features. Yeah, some of them are a bit out there. We've seen interceptors, for example, but those serve a purpose, and the purpose is so Microsoft can come in and optimize our code even further. So I think C Sharp is a very sexy language. I just think that you can't go from a not so sexy language into a sexy language overnight. And as we can see by the Tayobi Intex, it has been increasing over time. And that's a good thing. People are choosing it, choosing to stick with it and choosing to use it more. I do, however, think that it's not the most accessible language. For example, the way C Sharp developers, or at least the most C Sharp developers start getting into C Sharp, I would think, is Unity the game engine. And that is something that Microsoft doesn't really own or control. They can help, but they don't own. So if the Unity decides for some reason to go with Rust or Go or any other language, I think we're going to have a problem getting more developers to adopt C Sharp as their first language. And I think that's where the sexiness comes in, because building backend APIs isn't necessarily sexy, but building games is. So yeah, it's a bit of an interesting one. Then another one is, yes, I've been using Python, Ruby, yeah, TypeScript, Java, etc. for over five years since leaving the Microsoft stack, and they still miss C Sharp pretty consistently. And as someone who's also writing Java uh, and Kotlin very regularly and quite a bit, I can tell you that Java doesn't even come close to the design of C Sharp. And I would say that Kotlin is sort of on par. Maybe I prefer Kotlin a bit more as a language because it was designed from a greenfield standpoint, so all the features feel thought out and they feel like they have cohesion in the language design, which is what I don't really like in C Sharp. Now, there is an interesting concept that's coming in C Sharp for the modern C Sharp, and I will talk about that in a future video. But I think the biggest issue of C Sharp as a language is feature inconsistency because they don't do versions like Rust, for example, you have some old C Sharp stuff that you just carry over and you can use, but maybe you don't really want to use. It's a bit of an interesting situation. Another comment, I think C Sharp gets ignored because it's from Microsoft. I don't agree with that. And actually one of the comments from what I can see now uh, debunks it very quickly. Meanwhile, they're all using VS Code daily. Yes, VS Code is the most used text editor slash ID because yeah, it's not technically an ID, but you can turn it into one. And I don't think that this comment is true because people love TypeScript. So it is a language that is basically if C Sharp and JavaScript had a baby made by the creator of C Sharp. So I don't really believe in this point. I think it is more specific to .NET and C Sharp than it is to anything Microsoft. And the biggest problem that Microsoft, I think, has with that relationship between C Sharp and Microsoft is Microsoft is so huge that is not just C Sharp and .NET. It has so many tentacles, this Microsoft octopus. And even if Microsoft is a very well-received company, you know, the stock price is high, OpenAI, amazing stuff, all that can go well, but you can still have this tentacle over here that people never really keep up to date with, and they just assume it is how it was five, 10 years ago, which isn't the case. Now, a very true comment from what I can read is I think Microsoft is still paying the price for .NET Framework being Windows only for all those years. Absolutely, not only Windows only, but also closed source. Also, they were very protective of it in the past. So yes, that is the price Microsoft is really paying here. Now, you would think the solution is just make it open, make it free, make it cross-platform, but that's not enough because once you get dismissed at some point in the past, you have to eagerly want to go and change your opinion on something 
and that's not something that us humans were good at. If you tried Java back in the day, yeah, Java might have been good or might have been bad, but that will be the opinion you still have unless you've actually refreshed your knowledge on the subject. So what I recommend is if you hate something like PHP, for example, which everyone will tell you PHP is good now. Yeah, OK, sure. But you have to eagerly try and give it a go to see if it is really good or not. And many people don't have this will because they moved on and they use something else they're very comfortable with and they don't want to go anywhere because remember once you get out of your comfort zone you might lose all that experience you already have if it is not transferable so why would you want to move to c sharp if you're very comfortable using go for example the rest of the comments very much follow the same trend so now i want to know from you what do you think about this very question is c sharp under hyped is it over hyped is it where it should be leave a comment down below and let me know and please be respectful to each other in those comments because we do want to have a healthy discussion well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding